Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be going over the restoration and installation of Honda CBX carburetors. I've had a lot of requests uh, ever, by everyone to uh, go over these carbs. So anyway, the, I've got three sets here. Two of them are freshly taken off bikes and the other set in the background there has been restored and replated. However, they are leaking, so I'm going to be replacing the uh, the float, float seats and float uh, valves in those. So in this first part of the video, I'm going to be showing you the complete disassembly of a typical set of CBX carbs. Now, to get the floats out, you need a kind of a, like a, pointed screwdriver or whatever you want to call it of uh, um, I'm at a loss here but anyway a pointed screwdriver to get the uh, float pins out and they should come out pretty easily and once you get them out you want to put them back into the float and set it aside and then here's the uh, float valve there and I'll go over that in a few minutes so on the rest of this, I'm going to be taking the rest of these. I'm going to f speed this up here, and I'm going to take the rest of these floats and float valves out. Just going to kind of let the video run here for a minute. And then once you get all that out, then you have to take out all the jets. And all the jets are uh, shown there in, they're all brass. And you just take a flathead screwdriver and unscrew them. And then once you get all those out, then you want to get the uh, float seats out, which I'm taking out here. And then once all those are out, you want to take a couple, couple of the, uh, the jets. You have to use, a, I think it's about a 6 or 7 millimeter wrench to get those out. And once all of the jets are out of the carburetors, then you can start taking the bodies apart. And you start off by, by removing the brackets that hold all the carburetors together. Just getting the last couple of floats out here. If they, if they get stuck, you just kind of tap it like I'm doing there. And it kind of helps it along. Sometimes they get gummed up and they get they get tight. So here I'm taking off taking out the uh, float seats. Then like I said you turn the carbs upside down and or back right side up again. Then you start taking the brackets apart and they're mostly held on by 10 millimeter bolts and uh, Phillip head screws. So once all those are out, as you can see there, it had it had clear zinc plating. And I'm going to clean these up and, and have them uh, plated like this, like the original plating again. And you want to keep the screws and so on together so you don't lose them. And again, those can be cleaned up and, and replated as well, which is what I'll do. Then one, you know, the, I'm just continuing to take things apart here. This, this is part of the linkage setup here, and it's got a little cotter key in there that you got to pull out to get the spring out of there. And I'll go over all these parts and pieces and details when I put the carburetors back together again after they're all cleaned up and the parts are all replated and so on. So once you get all of that apart, you have to take the, uh, the intake butterflies off and each one's held by two screws as you can see there. Once the butterflies are out of there, then you can pull the shaft 
out that holds them in. And that shaft is spring-loaded. And I'll show you that in a minute. And again, when I put these carbs back together again, I'll, I'll, show, I'll go over all of that. Those silver tubes that I'm pulling out are the are the feed feeder tubes. So when the fuel goes into the uh, intake portion of the carburetor, it feeds all the carburetors equally. And then here I'm pulling the butterfly shaft out. And again, it's got a spring on it, which uh, I will go over when I put the carburetor back together again. There's the spring there. Be sure you don't lose that. Then you take the caps off and pull out the uh, vacuum pistons and they're, 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 these carburetors are vacuum actuated and the uh, Honda calls them the valve, the, the uh, carburetor piston and it holds the uh, the main jet needle needle jet and here's a reason why you have to rebuild the carbs you get all kinds of crap in there that was a piece of like ragweed or whatever it was so and to get the needle jet out you just take a flathead screwdriver pull the mounting screw out of there and then the needle jet comes right out and I'll go over the uh, uh, carburetor rebuild kit um, in a few minutes but the uh, the needle jet you get a new needle jet when you get a when you get a new carburetor kit This is a plastic guide that that uh, stops the piston from rotating. And again, you get a new one of these in the carburetor kit in case it's worn down. So that's that's uh, the the carburetor body stripped down of everything, and now it's ready to clean up. And I'll clean it up in the uh, parts washer and get it scrubbed down, get, try to get most of the corrosion out of there and all cleaned up. And, I, and again, I'll go over that when I put the carburetors back together. So these are all my parts and pieces that I'm going to take to the platers. And I've got a whole bunch of nuts and bolts and screws and everything for other bikes and as well as CBXs. But here are the parts for the carburetor sets. And I've got to clean all that stuff up and take it to the platers. And then uh, part two of this video, I'll, uh, all this stuff will be cleaned up and ready to go. So when I go to the platers, there's, there are chrome items. There are black zinc items, mostly for 1100Fs, 900Fs. Then you have yellow zinc. And then these two are for bright zinc so I'm gonna be cleaning all that stuff you got you gotta have to clean up all the the corrosion off that stuff and everything before you take it to the platers and again here's some items that are going to be chromed So now to the carburetor kit. This is the this is a kit from Keister, and my opinion, if you if you're not using Honda uh, original Honda rebuild kits, the Keister are the next best thing, and I would say they're equal. I've used them in the past and without any problems. But here's the main reason why carburetors leak, and that's the float seat and the float valve and the seats have these little um, you know filter 
filters on the end of them and then the float uh, valve has a little rubber uh, seal and it seats up inside here and as you can see in this brand new one it's nice and clean and no tarnish no tarnish build up or anything which is the main reason why these things will leak and they put little filters on them so that you know if you have any trash in the in the uh, fuel it won't get in there but here's one that's all the used one it's all tarnished and I took these out of the rebuilt carburetors that are leaking and uh, when those carburetors were rebuilt they were not replaced so now I'm going to put new ones in to stop the leaking but as you can see the float valve has a little spring-loaded uh, valve on there and again I'll go over all of that when I put the carburetors back together again and then here's the old one that I took out and it's a much weaker spring on there so this one's worn out and the rubber is pretty much warmed out but the but the keister there on the right you can see that it's a much more substantial valve uh, than the stock one was or, or they may have been aftermarket but here's the keister set there and then also the the gaskets are much better in the uh, keister sets as well So what I do before I put the carburetors on the bike is that I'll fill it with gasoline and this is uh, the, and just to make sure it's not leaking and that that brass pipe right there and the drain plug that I just showed you are one of the main reasons why these things will leak. So here I'm putting in the uh, float seat into the carburetors that have been rebuilt already. And as I mentioned, these these carbs uh, leaked in all six carburetors, and it's because the uh, the valve seat and the valves were not replaced originally when the carburetors were rebuilt. So I'm putting new ones in now, and the float valve just goes on to this little tab here, which is adjustable, by the way. And I, I always just, when I put the float in, I just make sure that the, uh, the float in its, in its natural position is parallel with the line of the carburetor, the bottom line of the carburetor, just like that. As you can see, it's, it's um, parallel. And it's got a, a spring to it, so when you bounce it like that it bounces and it's got a real nice solid you know firm spring to it now I'll show you on this next carburetor that I that I do uh, put this bowl back on and you'll see in the next carburetor when I take the bowl off that the that the float has no spring to it it's not parallel to the edge of the carburetor and you know it just shows that the float valve is worn out so here it is here and as you can see there's no spring it's just kind of limp in there and then here it is replaced So again, I'm speeding this up to go through the rest of the uh, carburetors to replace all the, the uh, float seats and float valves. Again, this, this is one of the main reasons why carburetors leak on these type of carburetors. It's either the, the float valves and float seats or the brass uh, standpipe that's inside the bowl. Sometimes those get cracked or the, the solder comes loose or whatever. And uh, if those leak, then, then you'll have fuel coming out of the overflow tubes.
And the same with the float seats and float valves. If they are worn out, then the fuel goes into the carburetor and keeps filling up until it goes out the overflow tubes. So those float seats are really, really important that they seal the fuel up when they, you know, when the, when the bowls are full. So if the little rubber tips are worn out, then it'll leak. Now on this, this uh, third carburetor here, it's, that's where the accelerator pump is, and that's what this, bar, this uh, shaft is here. It's part of the accelerator pump, and it goes through a little corrugated uh, rubber tube uh, or gasket and up against the linkage of the carburetor so that when you, you know, twist the throttle, that's what... Uh, creates the vacuum that pumps the fuel into the jet. So now I'm ready to install the carburetor onto the bike and uh, the first thing I do is I get I get this intravenous feeding fuel uh, jar and it's got a uh, petcock on the end of the uh, feeder tube and I always hook the carburetors up and turn on the gas first to make sure they're not leaking before I put them on the bike. Now in this case right away the carbs leaked as you can see fuel there and I just kind of I shut the fuel off and then I just kind of tapped uh, tap the carburetors a little bit and when you're putting brand new seats and valves in there, sometimes it takes a minute for them to to seat. But as you can see there now, there's no more leakage coming out of the overflow tubes. So again, it may you may leak there for a couple minutes first, and then you just turn the fuel off and back on again, and then they shouldn't leak. So here I'm. On the restoration bikes, I'm putting brand new intake uh, tubes here and the rubber intake tubes. And uh, to me, I always replace them when I rebuild the engine or have the carburetors off because the other ones get hard and brittle and you don't know if there's any hairline cracks in them or whatever, and it can affect the way the bike runs. So I always get brand new ones and uh, put them on. Not to mention that it's much easier to get the carburetors back on the bike as well. So here all, I have all and you can see here, they're much more flexible. They actually are flexible and the old ones are hard as a rock. So, so now before you put the carbs on, I always hook up the, the throttle cables. And the CBX carburetors are one of the hardest carburetors out there to put throttle cables on, especially if the carburetors are on the bike. So I always put them on before I put the carburetors on the bike. And it's really the smartest thing to do. It takes you just a couple of minutes. And here I'm putting the main throttle cable on, which which is very simple. You just reach it down there and it's got and they and it just naturally goes in and I'll show you here you have to kind of hold the throttle wide open and then get a screwdriver in there and push it and it'll just slip into the uh, end of the linkage there and there it goes it's now it grabs And that's it. That's that's hooked up. That's the main throttle cable. Then next you have to put in the return cable, which is also spring loaded. And this one's a little trickier because you have to actually slip the the end of the cable into 
the hole down there and then get the cable in the slot and then once you've got that done I've, I've kind of jumped through because it takes a couple minutes to get that done but you get the idea you just slip it in one end and then through the hole on the other and get the cable in the slot then secure the cable on the cable bracket pull the cable tight to get any uh, slack out of it otherwise it'll fall back out again so and then here I'm hooking up the choke cable which is pretty simple to to get that in and again reduce the slack so it doesn't fall out and then tighten the holder in place Then once the cables are connected to the carburetors, then they're ready to put onto the bike. And again, I always test it to make sure it's not binding anywhere and that the flaps are moving when I when I pull the cable. You don't want to you don't want to discover any problem after you get the carburetors on the bike. So now with all the cables connected, they're ready to put on the bike. So now I just put a I just put a furniture pad on the engine so you don't scratch anything up and then you just kind of work the carburetors in there uh, and make sure the cables are through the frame before you do this because they have to be going through the frame and then just line them up with the intake tubes and again with new intake tubes it's much much easier when they're all hard and brittle there's no flexibility and the carburetors are really hard to put in there. So I, I kind of get them started and then I get a couple of pieces of wood to get up against the carburetors there and against the frame. And then I have about a four foot long cr uh, crowbar, if you want to call it, for leverage because these things really are tight going in so you really need a lot of leverage so I, I put the crowbar there between the the wood pieces line everything up and just I'm at the top of the four foot crowbar and then it pushes the carburetors right in to do this without a crowbar is almost impossible anybody who's tried it knows what I'm talking about And now they're in. So now I'll I'll put the uh, the mounting straps on with the screws on them later. You know those those you can fit around the the intake tubes without a problem. The only reason I didn't do it here is because they have not been plated yet, and I want to have them replated before I put those on. So now the carburetors are connected, and ready to go so uh, the next step will be to put on the air cleaner and everything and then you have to lower the engine down a little bit to do that and I'll be covering that on the next video 
But that's going to be it for this video, and I appreciate you watching. But the but the first thing you have to do here is uh, connect the throttle cables. Make sure they're running through, you know, the the right the right way through the frame and so on. But again, thank you so much for watching this video, and uh, uh, stay tuned for the next one. I have some more videos coming, and on the next one I will be uh, installing the air box, and uh, then I can get the rest of the chain together and the, the back wheel and so on, all of which you have to have off the bike to, to uh, get these carburetors done. So... Again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.